وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين in this Ramadan Daily Droplets, we're going to talk about Ramadan as a time where we look after everyone, and particularly as it relates to Zakat al-Fitr. Allah Azza wa Jal said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he said about this ayah, successful is the one who tazakka, either purifies themselves or gives the zakah. And then remembers the name of his Lord and prays. Umar bin Abdul Aziz said about this ayah, Tazakka means zakatul fitr, wa dhakar asma rabbihi fasalla, and remembers the name of his Lord and prays. This is when he goes to the Salatul Eid. So he rem- he gives the zakatul fitr, then he remembers the name of Allah Azza wa Jal and he makes the takbirat, and then he prays Salatul Eid. He prays the prayer of Eid. That person is truly successful. The one who gives the zakat al-fitr and remembers the name of Allah Azza wa Jal and prays the Salat al-Eid. That person is truly successful. And as for the, the summary or the nature of the zakat al-fitr, Abdullah ibn Abbas narrated, فَرَضَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ زَكَاةَ الْفِطْرِ تُهْرَةً لِلصَّائِمْ مِنَ اللَّغْوِ وَالرَّفَثِ وَطُعْمَةً لِلْمَسَاكِينَ he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, made obligatory the zakat al-fitr in order to purify the fasting person from al wa rafath And subhanallah, all of us, our fasting, but it has to be that your fasting had a degree of al wa rafath a degree of, if you like, uh, not giving it its dues, not concentrating properly, and some words that were said that shouldn't have been said, maybe some anger at times, perhaps some bad words that shouldn't have been said at times. At Rafath, it can be, uh, it can be evil words of speech, any words of speech that shouldn't have been said. Ultimately, we've talked about how everything is supposed to fast: your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hands, your legs. All of them are supposed to fast. How many of us can say the whole of Ramadan that was true? Well, that there were elements where we fell short. And there were times when we exceeded or we went over the limits of Allah with what Allah had commanded us to do. There were times when our eyes and our ears and our tongue and our hands and our feet didn't fast the way they were supposed to. And to purify this, that is why we have zakat al-fitr. And in order to provide food for the miskin, and this is from the mahasin of Islam, the beautiful features of Islam that we should all be proud of, that Islam is not just a one-sided thing, that it's just about, uh, just about purifying yourself or looking after yourself. Rather, the way you purify your fast is by looking after other people, looking after the needy. للمساكين, and a food for the people who are poor. Because on the day of Eid, everyone should celebrate Eid. Everyone should be celebrating all those people that completed Ramadan. They should be celebrating. And it's not fair that the wealthy and those who are comfortable celebrate and those who are poor don't have enough food to eat. Rather, the people who have it, they purify themselves. And the way they purify themselves is by looking after the poor people. The hadith continues. مَنْ أَدَّاهَا قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةِ فَهِيَ زَكَاةٌ مَقْبُولَةٌ وَمَنْ أَدَّاهَا بَعْدَ الصَّلَاةِ فَهِيَ صَدَقَةٌ مِنَ الصَّدَقَاتِ Whoever gives it before the salah, before salah of Eid, it is a zakah which will be accepted from them. And whoever gives it after the salah, it's only a charity. It's a basic charity. It's not zakat al-fitr unless it's given before the salat of Eid. So this brings us to the issue of when the zakat al-fitr is to be given and the opinion that we're going to put forward and the one that we uh, feel is the safer of the opinions is that it is counted as zakat al-fitr either on the night before Eid, that is the night when there is no taraweeh, 
or one day or two days prior to that. Any one day or two days prior to that. So the night when there is no taraweeh, that's the proper time for it. The night when there is no taraweeh. But if a person gives it one day or two days before that, then this is acceptable insha'Allah ta'ala uh, based upon the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, in which it said, وَكَانُوا يُعْطُونَ قَبْلَ الْفِطْرِ بِيَوْمٍ أَوْ يَوْمَيْنِ They used to give it before the, 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 the Eid al-Fitr by a day or by two days. And the hadith is narrated by Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. So who is to pay the zakat al-Fitr then? Everyone who is able. Everyone who is able. That's what Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is narrated from him. And this is the, the, what is, what's the easiest way to explain it. That everyone who is able to do so. And everyone who has the provision for a couple of days worth of food, a day's worth of food, and they have enough for themselves and their family for Eid, then they are required to give zakat al-fitr. And it's to be given from everyone in the household. That is from the, uh, from the old, the young, those who fasted, those who didn't fast. Even some of the scholars recommended it, even though it's not obligatory, for to be paid on behalf of the fetus that hasn't been born yet. So it is to be paid on behalf of the whole household. But who pays it? The one who pays it is the one who is the munfiq, the one who spends upon the household. So the husband is the one who is spending upon his wife and his children. He pays zakat al-fitr on their behalf. He pays it on their behalf. The one who typically spends upon you is the one who is responsible for paying zakat al-fitr on, uh, on your behalf. So who is it paid to? The Jumhur, the majority of the scholars, they said it's paid to the people of the zakat that are mentioned in the ayah إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ to the end of the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah. However, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta he said it's only for, or specifically for the first two categories. So it's not for the all categories of the zakat, but it's specifically for the faqir and the miskin. That's who it's particularly targeted towards. The poor person, either the one who is faqir or miskin, the one who has totally got no money at all, or the one that has money but it's not enough for their basic needs. So the person who would be eligible for the zakah because of poverty. That's the one that it is that it is paid to. And it's better for a person to distribute it themselves. It's better for a person to distribute it for themselves, but there is no harm. Uh, and Imam al-Nawi, he mentioned this in his majmu' Rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, he said Al-afdal an yufarraq al-fitrata bi nafsihi The best thing is for the person to give out or organize the, the zakat al-fitr for themselves But if the person Walau daf'aha ila al-imam aw al-sa'i aw man tajma'u indahu al-fitra Linnas if a person gathers together and he gives it to the imam or he gives it to the person who goes around or he gives it to the one who usually gathers the, the zakat al-fitr like a charity if and he wa'adhina lahu fi ikhrajiha ajza'athu he said if he then goes and gives permission for that person he says to that person you have the permission to go and take it on my behalf and distribute it then this is acceptable but he said لكن تفريقه, لكن تفريقه بنفسه أفضل من هذا كله. But for him to give it out by himself is better than that. Is better than that. All of the, all of those things. So here, what we would say a lot of people ask the question is, okay, I know how to give it. I know who it should be given to. But how do I, how do I actually do this? We would say that you should begin, if possible, with the people that are near to you. Some of the scholars, they even preferred if you can give it to the relative that is needy, who is, if you know of a relative or a neighbor who is needy, you give it to them. If not, look at the people in your home area, your, your city or your locality. Instead of looking at, at people across the world in a different place, first make sure that the people in your locality are being taken care of and that they're getting what they need. And that is the asal in the zakah, tu'khadu min. Is taken from the rich of that place and given to the poor of that place. That's the that asal in it. That's the that's the basic principle in it. 
However, there is no harm in paying it abroad if it becomes difficult for a person or the person can't find someone or doesn't think they'll be able to find someone. But especially in these times that we're in right now, and especially with the difficulties that a lot of people are having, financial difficulties at this time, I believe that if you look around, you'll find people deserving of it. But if because of restrictions, you're limited and you're stuck in the house, you can't go out, for example, and you can't, you're struggling to find somebody who is needy, then if you give it to somebody like a charity or something like that, and you tell them to pay it on your behalf, there is no harm in that. But zakat al-fitr, and here's where we come to the next point. Zakat al-fitr is something which should be given in food. It should not be given in money. There is no harm in you giving money to a charity and instructing them to purchase food with it. But it's not acceptable for it to be given out in money. And it's not considered to be zakat al-fitr if it's given out in money. It's only considered to be zakat al-fitr if it's given in food. And the amount to be given is a sar. And a sar is a measure of volume, not a measure of weight. So where a lot of people go wrong in this is that they consider the sar to be a measure of weight. It's not, it's a measure of volume. It's like a liter, like liters or milliliters. It's not a measure of weight. Um, because those things, those foods, the basic food types in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the ones that were considered the staple foods and zakat al-fitr should be paid from the staple food, the food people will benefit from. Like, what's the main food you, that people store and, and eat? The, the main sort of base ingredient, like could be rice, it could be uh, wheat, um, it could be dates. If that's a country where dates are the staple food that people have, uh, in the home, then you give it in one of these in one of these things. An asar is a measure of volume, and for the purpose of zakat or fitr, the safest opinion is that it's three liters. However, some of the scholars said if you go with three kilograms, you'll be fine because three kilograms, even though it's a measure of weight, will always be more than three liters in in almost everything in in uh, in rice, in dates, in everything. Uh, three kilograms would be more than you could pack into the space of three liters, which is approximately what the SAR equates to. So if a person does it in kilograms, there's no harm in that. And if a person gives more, there's no harm in that. It can be a sadaqa, it can be a sadaqa for them, and the zakat or fitr would be the obligatory amount. And if they give it to one poor person, there's no harm in that. And if they spread it out among uh, the, the family, so one part of the family zakat or fitr goes to one poor person and one to another, then there is no harm in that either. And as we said, if people are struggling in this time to find people because of issues with uh, not being able to get out of the house or not being able to meet up with people, then inshallah there is no harm in paying an organization, like Imam al-Nawi mentioned, uh, to, to, to give it to someone who distributes the zakat al-fitr and likewise included in that is paying an organization on the understanding and the niyyah that that organization will purchase the food and distribute the food before the Eid prayer. Because if it's not before the Eid prayer, it is sadaqa min as sadaqat. It's a type of sadaqa from the types of sadaqa. So that's what Allah Azza wa made easy for us to mention about the zakat al-fitr and Allah Azza wa knows best. والصلاه والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم if you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running make sure you head over to amau@home.com